and and there hasn't been any comment on that at all. To me, it was it was such a telling remark. Yeah, it Perhaps you could uh, yeah, recount it, that. That for is us. that is in the long report that I wrote on the death. It's basically saying, "Gee, let's not talk about this outside the family. We will never know why this happened." Uh, you could look at it as sort of a semi-public plea to shut up and be quiet. It, it, as I recall, Clinton said. Uh, uh, we need to deal with things like this within our family. Correct, yeah. Keep it within the family. We, we, in other words, it, to me, if you read it carefully, you'll see this is not the way, whatever he did was not the way to do it. And if we have a problem, we need to deal with it within ourselves. Or that same thing could happen to you. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, you, that's... What, you could say you're interpreting it as a veiled threat. Yeah, that's possible. When Vince Foster left for uh, lunch that day at about 1 o'clock from the White House, did he invite anybody to go to lunch with him? As officially what happened was he had them fetch lunch for him from the White House mess about 12.30. He ate a medium rare cheeseburger with fries and a Coke on the couch in his office reading a newspaper, took the onions off his medium rare cheeseburger, left the White House at about 1 p.m., uh, went out to his car, slot 16, West Executive, and left the White House, presumably driving out on the Pennsylvania side because it was open then. But officially, we, that is the only lunch he ate. Officially, he did not eat lunch anywhere else. Officially, he did not eat lunch anywhere else with anybody else. But that's, that's you know, uh, it's hard to say. That is that's, any, that's the official line. And is there anything in the record about him asking anybody to go with him? When he left the White House? No, no, not as far as I know. There is a statement in the record, uh, the Dr. Byer at the autopsy said that it looked like Foster had eaten a large meal two or three hours before he died. He said that large meal looked like it might have been meat and potatoes. That's pretty close to a medium rare cheeseburger and fries. That would indicate that Foster died three or four o'clock that afternoon. And my last question, can you tell us about Marcia Scott and what she did oh, with Vince yeah, yeah, Foster the day before? And after this long weekend uh, that I think was some sort of negotiating weekend with Webb Hubble, Michael Cardozo, who was assist who deputy White House counsel in the Carter administration, the weekend before the Tuesday Foster died, uh, everybody in the world called Vince up. The president called him at home Monday night to say, how'd the weekend go? Uh, people dropped by his office that morning, part people in the Arkansas core group, apparently all of them to say, how did the weekend go? Uh, one of those people was Marcia Scott. Uh, she had known Vince off and on for many, many years. She had what Vince's secretary described as an unusual closed door, one to two hour meeting with him uh, the Monday before the Tuesday of his death. She was later uh, interviewed by the FBI, two interviews. Basically, she was non-responsive, saying, I don't really remember what we talked about. I think he was going, I think he was trying to make a decision. And it just seems weird because it's, it, it, it'd be a routine conversation if nothing happened. But say if I've got a good friend and they blow their brains out a day after my last conversation with him, as soon as I find out his brains have been blown out, my last conversation with him is going to be concretized in my memory. I will know what we talked about for a long time, even though I normally might have forgotten about it. And it, some people have speculated that what happened was that Marsha came out of that meeting and said something like to Bill Clinton, this is pure speculation, the deal, he's changed his mind. The deal, is, the deal that we thought we had with Vince, he's not going to you know, follow. I, we just don't know what happened because Marsha doesn't remember or didn't say. Yes, sir. Yeah, last question. No, no more. Okay. Yeah, anyway, I think I'm told that we got time for one more quickie, at least while I'm at the mic. So go ahead. Okay. Yeah, there's been no question made about uh, another autopsy on uh, Vince Foster. Is that a possibility? Uh, Chris Ruddy is pushing for that. A lot of people are pushing for that. I don't because I think that I the mission of people who fooled with the body was tape. to do a real good job so a second autopsy wouldn't reveal much. Having said that, uh, a, a pathologist that I know who knows the members of the Fisk Medical Panel uh, has said that he thinks you could still find some good stuff in a second autopsy. I'm not sanguine that will happen because even if Starr wants it, it's going to be a mixed federal state jurisdiction. The family will oppose it. 
uh, an Arkansas state court judge will be rule at some point and will probably say even if Starr wants to get a hold of the body, he can't get a hold of it. Uh, based upon the report Starr has issued, I can't conceive of any reason why Starr would want from Starr's point of view to have a second autopsy. So if he doesn't ask for it, it ain't going to happen. And even if he did ask for it, I don't think it would happen. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could have been <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.